Hey everyone, it's Keely here for Soy and Shane. Thank you so much for joining me. Today I'm going to be making a remake of Raspberry Violet. Now this was a soap that I made at the beginning of the year or showed at the beginning of the year and it was part of three custom order soaps for a wedding. Now when the bride originally approached me to make these soaps, she mentioned to me that she liked the idea of either having botanicals on the top of the soaps or she really liked the idea of glycerin embeds. So when we decided on Raspberry Violet, I offered her the two sort of um, alternatives and she did decide to go with the botanicals and I really liked how that soap came up. But I always wanted to remake this soap using the other design concept I gave to her, which was to use the glycerin raspberry embeds and to do some piped flowers as well. So that's what we're going to do today. Now once again with this soap I have blended my own fragrance oil and I'm using a 50-50 blend of fresh raspberry from Aroma and violet from Brambleberry which I get from Aussie Soap Supplies. So let's go and make this raspberry violet soap. Right, so in my jug here I have my oils and you'll find the recipe that I use down in the description box below. I have my lye water solution here and I've done all my measurements using soap calc. Um, I've also done it using something else which I will get into in a little bit. I'm going to start by pouring my lye water solution down my stick blender just to stop any splashbacks. I'm going to mix it up until everything's emulsified and then I'm going to split it out for some colours. Now because this um, soap actually actually didn't discolor at all the last time I did it. I am again going to use a white base and then we're going to do a drop swirl of some pinks and purples. going to save just a little bit which we are going to use for some piping. In this one I have some melon physomica and I'm just going to mix that up and then leave it to one side uh, ready to do some piping on the top of this soap. Alright so in my big jug here I'm going to put some titanium dioxide which has already been dispersed in some water. In one of these small tubs I'm going to put some raspberry rush mica from Bath Bomb World and I'm going quite heavy on the micas today because I want some really bright popping colours out of here. And then for my purple I'm going to be using some of that magic violet and this time I'm going to put a lot more in than what I used for the embeds just to try and get that really nice bright purple colour. So I'm going to give these a mix up and then I'm going to add the fragrance. way now. I didn't take the stick blender off before because I am pretty sure that that stick blender is on its absolute last legs. I struggled to get the bottom attachment onto the top of the, um, onto the motorized part of it. So I'm pretty sure it's probably only going to last a couple more soaps. So I need to really start going to look for a new stick blender very soon. But we are now ready to start pouring this and I still can't decide whether to do an in the pot swirl or a um, drop swirl. So why not do both? So that is all nicely mixed. Let's put the purple into the white and then I will drop swirl the pink into the mold. I think that will work nicely. So I'm just going to pour from quite high up so it falls down to the bottom of the white and get all of that purple out because I really don't want to save any of it. Right, so I have my log mold here. I'll just get that silicon stuck back onto the sides and I am now going to pour from the middle and just let the soap do its thing and create its own pattern. So just start pouring and get some of that white mixed in there. Now just to get this pink to really move I'm going to save some of that behind. Grab the pink, give it a bit of a stir because it has thickened just slightly and this will loosen it all back up not too vigorously so we're not throwing it everywhere and then I'm going to drop swirl that into the mold. I might just do is put the 
rest of this in here so I don't end up with big clumps on the top of my soap. And then we'll finish pouring it in. So that is all poured in there. I'm just going to leave this sit here just for a few moments and then I'll come back and do the embeds on top. I just, I think this is just a little bit too runny at the moment to start doing the embeds. They'll just sink and they won't look very good. So I'll be back in just a moment. Right, so my green is still a little bit too soft to be piping, but I kind of need to get the raspberry set on the top of this soap so that they um, sit into the soap nicely and don't push up and just look really awful. So we've got these raspberries, which are what we created in the midweek video. They look so realistic, good enough to eat, but oh, I really wouldn't recommend them. Um, what I'm going to do is just start scattering them randomly across the top and just pushing them into the soap slightly so that they stick in there and then we'll fill it all in with the raspberries and the violets that we've also piped or not the raspberries the violets and the leaves that we're going to pipe so we're going to get all those in so this week has it's not so much been a busy week in terms of me making things in fact that's been quite the opposite um, I have been eyeing off Soap Maker 3 for so long now, probably about 18 months, and I've always put off buying it. And the reason I've put off buying it is because the computer that I have in the workshop is a really old dinosaur of a thing. It is the oldest computer that we actually have in the house. It's probably about, must be about 8 to 10 years old. <laughs> It's still got Windows 7 on it, it is that old, but it turns on, apart from when it's full of glitter and um, bicarbonate soda, then it needs to go down to the um, computer repair shop and be cleaned out. But you know what, it still turns on, programs that I need actually work on it, the only thing is I can't um, update any of the programs because it just can't cope with that Windows 7 as its base but it still turns on it still works but I have been concerned about spending the money on getting Soap Maker 3 and then loading it onto the computer and then the computer deciding today's the day that we're not going to work anymore so I've always been putting it off I decided to bite the bullet and get Soap Maker 3 and I was so relieved to actually find out that as I was uploading it, it's giving you know all the keys and everything to getting it to work and it does say on there that to keep the keys in a safe place for in case your computer crashes or you get a new computer. So yay, if ever this computer does decide it's actually had enough, um, I can actually upload it onto a new computer. So if anyone else has been considering buying it and that is a real concern for you you don't have to be worried because you can put it onto a new computer if you need to which was really good news so right that's all my raspberries on I will go and get the violets prepared and then we'll put them on and some leaves and I'll tell you a little bit more about soap maker and my journey with it so far all right so I am back to do the tops of these and I am going to start by simply piping some fairly large leaves on here. I'm using a Wilton 366 leaf tip and at the moment it doesn't really look like I'm planning anything here. I am just randomly piping the leaves because then once I've got a few of these leaves on I'm going to come over and grab my little violet flowers which we piped in the midweek video and I'm just going to gently that's not going to work just going to very gently peel them back up and off the paper and then I'm going to stick them just on top of where those leaves are so we'll actually be using that wet soap to adhere our violets onto this onto the top of the soap here so we'll grab this one and pop that one on there as well So then we'll just end up with like this little bed of violets and raspberries. So as I mentioned before, I have now invested in Soap Maker 3. And um, I'm, I am actually glad that I have finally 
um, got it, but it has been an absolute chore to get it set up. And I'm kind of kicking myself now for putting it off for so long. So basically I have had to do a complete and utter stop take of everything that is in my work shed. I've had to go through all my oils, all my, um, all the different ingredients, uh, all the additives and everything else. And just about a month ago, I am playing around with a couple of things and I ordered in all of these additives, which I've now had to go through and measure them to see what's left of them and everything else. Up until now, the way I've been working out my costings is I'm actually pretty good with um, Excel. Um, it was something I did in university, learned how to program Excel. So I do have a complete um, worksheet which tells me a complete breakdown of the cost of ingredients that go into all of my soaps and lotions and everything else. And when I sit there comparing what um, Soap Maker 3 is telling me against my Excel spreadsheets, most of the time they're pretty much spot on. The advantage with Soap Maker 3 is that it works out um, the shipping cost into the actual cost of the ingredients that you're buying in which is great so sometimes when you think something's actually cost you you know five cents per gram by the time you factored in the shipping from off that particular order it could actually be costing you maybe seven cents per gram um, so it's then you can actually stop and start looking at well do I need to actually be putting more into my order to average the um, shipping out across ingredients to make them cheaper and, and stuff like that. So I'm really, really impressed with um, the information that you can get out of Soap Maker 3. It is being a bit of a learning curve having to work things out, um, how to get these soap recipes into it. So this oh, particular soap I still calculated through Soap Calc because I've learned to, to actually trust that program. And then I have translated it through into Soap Maker 3 um, just to see because different calculators calculate the SAP values or the saponification values differently. So sometimes you can get slightly different amounts of lye and water that you need. And the way that um, Soap Maker 3 actually calculates the water, it's based on a lye um, concentration as opposed to a percentage of water based on your oil. So I had to try and work out um, what that lye solution was. But it has been really interesting. It's given me a lot more knowledge um, about the making process. Um, I've also found stuff out because when you enter an ingredient in, it then asks you for, especially if you're working in mills, it's pretty important. It asks you for specific gravity, which is basically how much um, the product weighs compared to volume. So that if something comes in a volume, say olive oil comes by the litre, but we work in grams or ounces or whatever measurement that you work in, you can enter it into your book in litres, you tell it what the specific gravity is, and then it will tell you how much is left in litres, um, even though your recipes have been calculated in grams. So that, that was really interesting because as I went through trying to find specific gravity for some of my ingredients, like the extracts and stuff, I actually then ended up sitting and reading more about all the different ingredients that I have. So it's actually been a really good learning curve um, and I've discovered a lot more about certain things that I stock. So it really has been a great investment. It has taken me about five days to get all of the main stuff in. I am sure as the weeks and months go on, I will find more and more and more stuff which needs to be entered. But all the main things are in, so I can actually start calculating again and know that I'm not messing up um, or messing up any of the quantities that I've already put in. So I'll get you stuck on there. So if Soap Maker 3 is something that you are looking at to purchase, I highly recommend it. But I also highly recommend it before you actually 
get your cupboards completely stocked up with lots and lots and lots of different little things <laughs> so that it really ha it's been really good but it has taken so long I haven't actually even got through to looking at my micas at the moment um, so that will be probably next week's project to add all of my mica colorants in but it is good to see the actual exact cost because when it comes to my little excel spreadsheet when it came to colorant because i didn't want to put in every single one i basically had you know, just a lot you know 10 cents of color to each batch of soap was how i was working it but if i do put it into this soap maker 3 it will tell me exactly how much a soap will be if I used mica from my micro obsession or if I used mica from say Bath Bomb World or um, Aussie Soap Supplies or any of the other supply places so it, I think it's going to be well worth it but yet if you are considering it don't do what I did and put it off just jump in and get it before your actual supply cupboard gets so ridiculous that it actually takes you forever to enter all that raw data in but as I said, I am actually loving having it and I'm sure once I've got all my recipes in there and everything else, it is going to be so much easier to keep track of things and give me a far better understanding of um, different prices that I've got as well. for their soap making and lotion making and everything else because it does do lotions and candles and all sorts anything that you can create you can actually put into that soap maker 3 so it's not just um, for soap making if you do I'd love to know any tips and tricks that you might have for using the program the one thing I am missing out of the program which um, I hope one day on an upgrade they might do is putting in a few more sort of shortcuts you know when you hit control E and you can edit something nice and easily without having to actually continuously use your mouse and that is really a sort of preference that has come from my school days we were not allowed to have a mouse in computer studies until we proved that we could use all of our keyboard shortcuts so I pretty much like to use short, shortcuts on the keyboard whenever I use any computer program and I'm also old enough to have been using DOS if <laughs> if you don't know what that is it is a time before Windows computers it's um, a time of Commodore 64. I could program a Commodore 64. I was petrified of the Apple computers when they first came out. I could run circles around that Commodore 64. The other thing is, does anyone know how to get rid of or how to have it only show either metric or imperial um, weight measurements? I work in metric and every so often I'm putting stuff in and it's telling me that I what I've thought I've put in as grams is actually sitting there as gallons and um, I really don't think you want like a gallon of um, chamomile <laughs> extract or something like that so I would like to take that out because it's taken me a long time then to go back through and find where I've gone wrong with certain things as well just going to make sure that all of these violets are stuck onto those bits of soap so that they don't come off when we go to cut them. So just to really finish this soap off, I have this holographic eco glitter which I got in from Aussie Soap Supplies. It is beautiful. It's just so shimmery and it's really icy looking with just little specks of like apricots and blues in it. I've put, um, put some of it into the Nurture Soap glitter spray pump and that's it. I'm just going to spray the top of this with some of this eco glitter. 
Okay, so we have a enough eco glitter on there, and just to finish that off, I am just going to spray it with some 70% rubbing alcohol just to hold all that glitter in and just to hopefully hold back any soda ash that may form in those sort of gaps. And now I'm going to bring you down for a closer look. Okay, so here is Raspberry Violet up close. I am really pleased with how this one has come together. I did like the first um, version I made of this, and as I mentioned, this was the other idea or concept I gave to her for the design. So I'm really pleased I actually gave this one a remake and a bit of a makeover. I am going to leave this one sit here overnight, and then I'm going to come back and we'll cut it open and see what swirls we've got on the inside. So Raspberry Violet is now ready to cut and I am loving the sparkle of that bio glitter on the top and the sides of this soap look really, really nice. I can't wait to get this one cut open and see what we've got on the inside. I am going to use my multi-bar cutter today um, and I'm just going to go through it very slowly so as not to um, damage any of my wires on the glycerin soap here. I'm also going to cut myself a fair size um, sample piece off the ends of these as well which will go into any orders that I get. So off we go on the way through. It is smelling great so once again it has held really nicely in fragrance so it really is a nice blend to do. I believe Brambleberry also do a fresh raspberry fragrance that you could blend um, if you're not here in Australia to use the aroma one but that fresh raspberry and the violet does blend well together I am almost through and there we go okay so let's go for one that is in the middle this time and this is what the inside of raspberry violet looks like I am loving that wispy purple color because that kind of matches in with the delicate sort of tones of a violet flower. And then we have those big chunks of the raspberry red, which just indicates just how chunky those little raspberries can actually be. So I am really pleased with how that design has come up on the inside and with all those raspberries and violets sitting on the top there. I'm we'll going to grab this next one as well. Yeah, and we still have that nice wispy purple with those big blobs of the, the raspberry pink. So I'm really, really pleased with the colour combination of this one. The original soap that I did in this fragrance was to actually match the wedding theme, so they were done in a lot more pastel colours. But I'm really, really loving how bright and cheery and quite spring and summery this sort of soap is, which will be really quite cheery for us going into our winter down here. Um, so I am really, really pleased with how this has come together. If you've enjoyed watching me make my raspberry violet soap, why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below. If you do have any questions, I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And if you haven't already and you're new around here, why not subscribe to the channel? And um, if you hit the little bell sign, it will let you know the next time I bring a video to you. And just a little hint, guys, keep an eye out for Wednesday's midweek video, or it could be Tuesday where you are, um, as I have an extra little bonus surprise for you. So until then, I hope you have a great week. Bye.